For the God of the mountain is still God in the valley when things go wrong. He'll make them right. Turn in your Bible. That's Acts chapter two, please. Well, I love this. Seems like the music is just a blessing this morning. This is what we needed. Uh, be praying for uh, Wes and Evelyn Hutchins. Mm -hmm. We've got so many to pray for. But, uh, he's having trouble again with that neck. You know, they put all the rods in his back a while, some time ago, some years ago. And uh, having a lot of trouble with it now. His wife is having some heart problems too, Evelyn. But they're hoping they can help him with one of those it's called a remote stimulator and they think he's a candidate for that so he may be able to get one of those so pray for them too it's just so many uh, that we we need to pray for God helps us to pray for one another I pray for your lost loved ones those that I know the different ones if you, you have lost loved ones I have and you pray for me and for mine Acts chapter 2, dropping down to verse 38. Uh, Brother Hamby, I mean, he's a preacher's preacher. I mean, hey. he can preach. In fact, he told me that we're, we're having his son, too, by the way. His son will be here in uh, November 20th. 20th. I got my calendar over here, and he takes care of me. November 20th. And we're looking forward to him. He'll be in the morning and evening service. And I mention that because he's a good preacher too, great preacher, a blessing. Uh, although Brother Hamby is hard, but uh, Brother Hamby told me this. I asked him how long it would take his son to learn his job. He is down from Canada now learning his dad's job. He said three or four years. I mean, that man's got a mind. He deals with people all over the world, with governments, with uh, while he's with me at times. He'll get calls from everywhere. So. <coughs> You pray, Brother Hammy looked a little fray, frail to me last year and a little more this year. So, see, it's helpful going down. It's a wise thing they're doing, I think, because that's such, that would close that. If they didn't have somebody to do his job, that, that <laughs> brother, I'll tell you. So you pray about it. But Brother Hammy will keep preaching. I know his Lord as he has a prayer. What a blessing. If you were here last week, you know that he preached from Ezekiel when God left. That's right. And I've read that often. And boy, he just brought out so many wonderful yeah. things. I, I love that portion of scripture because it, it makes me it makes me sad about it, but but it's it's what happened. And it's what happened here too. We don't know it. We didn't see him move from, you know, to the threshold and all of that. But I believe America's in that same shape. I believe God's left. And I believe God's left the church to us. We don't have the power. The glory was the Ichabod, the glory of the Paul. We don't have that. And he talked about not only when he left, but he talked about when he came again, of course, as a baby and as a a man to die on the cross. He grew up, lived. But he preached on when God left. And I'd like to preach on when God came back from the book of Acts. Yeah. Brother, I'll tell you some more. I'm excited. I am excited from what he said to what I studied and read this week. So let's read it together. Uh, verse 38, chapter 2 of the book of Acts. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and he shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized, and the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread 
and in prayers. Father, in Jesus' name, would you help us this morning? Lord, the, the day that you came back, you came back in glory, you came back in power through the power of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, we believe that you want to do that again today with the church. We ask you to forgive us this morning for our part in anything that has grieved you and, and kept you out of our hearts and our, out of you are in our heart, but out of our lives from having the power and the church from having the power. Oh, would you come back in mighty power once again before we go home? We believe that soon. Please, Lord, in Jesus' name, move on us today in mighty revival. We thank you for the meetings we had with Brother Hamby. But, Lord, we still need to move up. We still need to put into practice those things he said and those things we learned this morning. Please, in Jesus' name, would you once again, oh, once again, before we leave here, let us gather in a great harvest. Let us gather in our lost loved ones and friends and neighbors and those that uh, we work with. And Father, in Jesus' name, can we have a great move of God before we go home and then take us on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise God for it. I'll tell you what. The church is a supernatural thing, phenomenon, or whatever you want to call it, uh, in the book of Acts, one minute, there's no church. And the next minute, there's a church. And I got to thinking about that. You know, we're going to leave here the same way. Supernaturally. One minute, there's going to be a church. And the next minute, glory to God. We need to get excited about that. In the meantime, God wants to use us. And I mean, he wants to give us. Tom's almost over there in Sunday school. You need to get over there. I'll tell you, get over there. That, that rivers of living water. They're going to be there in chapter 7. I've been looking at it for weeks and weeks. And it's just a blessing uh, to think about what God could do with me. What God could do with you. Each one of you. I don't believe that, that uh, it, it's just the great preachers that, uh, you know, in the, in the mega churches that are successful. In fact, I'm wondering if any of them are successful that change their Bibles and they change all kinds of things. What a sad thing that is today. But I believe back in the New Testament, remember uh, in, in the New Testament, just had little house churches a lot of times, little small groups like ours. But I believe those pastors and I believe those members, deacons and just the general rule run of the church. I believe they had the power of God on them. I believe they had the blessing of God. And boy, I'll tell you, listen, we need to think about that. In the book of Acts here, we need, I don't believe this was just a one-time thing. A lot of people do. And if you differ with me, that's fine. But I believe it was a picture, a cameo, a, a, a something that we can see that we ought to be living today. I don't believe it was a one-time thing. I don't believe it was just meant to be at, in the book of Acts, and that's never again. I believe the church should have the same power to have back then. And uh, I'll tell you, this was a group of believers. Man, I'll tell you, you think about that. We ought to be like that congregation. So we want to look and see what we can do to be like them. Uh, you see a group of believers, number one, they were saved by faith. Look at verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, everyone in the name of Jesus Christ, for remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's where the power is at. Oh, but we are all going to, we all have the Holy Spirit that are saved. Bible says, it makes it clear, if you have not the Holy Ghost, you're not His. You're not His. But if you're really born again, you are saved by grace through faith. And, and these, they really put their faith in the Lord Jesus. And they did it in a time of great danger. Do you understand? Most of the world has been, this has been a place of great danger, most of, most of the world. Uh, from the first murder, in Cain and Abel, and on up, you think about Noah, the days of Noah. The Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Well, we're living in those days. What was it in the days of Noah that was so different? It was a day, the Bible says, of violence. Have you ever seen a time when the violence? You go to Ashwood here and see how many people were getting killed. Just listen to the news and, and murdered it. And just, uh, I mean, it's not just dying. There's plenty of people dying that way too, but getting murdered. Oh, my friend, this is a day of violence. We're living it. Bible says that in the last days, perilous times shall come. And perilous times have come. We're living in it. But I want to tell you, the church, when it was 
if I could use the word born when it was, when it was conceived there uh, in the book of Acts, uh, it was in a day of great trouble and, and a dangerous time. We can't quit living because it's a dangerous time. We need to get back out and get to doing something for Jesus. Oh, my friend. Uh, many times it cost them. A lot of times it cost a person their job. Uh, it cost them their, they, they were persecuted. Uh, and, and oftentimes it would even cost a person their life. Oh, my friend, to be a Christian. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. Verse 9 goes on to say, It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we need to remember that. You need to remember that. You're saved by faith through grace, uh, by grace through faith, rather. And uh, that's what we need to remember. If we're saved by grace through faith, then God's going to take care of us. Do you realize that you're not going to die one moment earlier than the Lord has the Lord has said? Now, I believe we ought to be careful. Now, I believe we ought to be, and I, we're not absolutely, we're not saying just throw your caution to the wind, nothing like that. But it was a day when you could die. You remember, Peter was delivered from prison, and yet they killed James. <laughs> And you're very familiar with him from the book of James. Yes. Well, I'm telling you. Oh, I'm telling you. It could happen. Could it happen? Yes. But folks, we need to listen. They repented of their sins. They received Christ as their Savior. And, and notice uh, down in verse 41, it says, And they that gladly received his word were baptized. They were gladly saved, and they were gladly were baptized. But I believe if you'll continue to read the book, you'll find that they gladly continued with the Lord. They, they gladly continued day in and day out, every day. We ought to have the joy of the Lord. The banner says back there, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Found in Nehemiah chapter 8. Oh, my friend, they gladly continued for the Lord. Let's don't be weary in well-doing. Let's just, let's get out here and see if we can. We used to do it. Let's do it again. <clears throat> So I used to tell people about Jesus, well, do it again. Well, people don't want to hear it. How do you know? You might just run into somebody who doesn't want to hear it. Oh, they had to, to hear the promise there. And um, uh, uh, verse 39, For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And Tom got on this morning. He got to call you. Didn't he? he got to deal with you. He got to draw you. Oh, yes. And, and, and he will. He will. If you're willing to, to, to believe on him, uh, John chapter 1 and verse 12, that's the promise. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John chapter 1 and verse 12. That is the promise. He promised that they were pricked in their hearts. They were convicted. And, and, and what a sad thing is. If any of you are out witnessing and doing any, and I hope all of you are, that are saved need to be with us for the Lord. You found out as I have found out, you almost have to beg people to get saved. <laughs> huh? Do you know what the Bible says? Let's, re let's read that verse. When revival comes, they will beg God to save them. We've heard of that happening in the Hebrides Islands, how the people fell in ditches, banks. Well, listen, that's scriptural. That's scriptural. Uh, oh, it says... Uh, uh, let, me get, let me get down to my note here. Uh, verse 41 is what I'm looking for. And they that gladly were, and they were saying that same day there were about 3,000 souls came. Uh, I want to go a little farther there. Uh, verse 37. I hadn't read that. That's the one I'm looking for. Uh, now, when they heard this, that is, they heard the uh, same Jesus whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when they heard this, verse 37, they were pricked in their heart. Now, watch this. And said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Huh? They were begging God to save them. Come on, they wanted... Hey, listen, when a revival comes, people will be coming to you crying. How about praying with me? How about praying with me? How about telling me about Jesus? Huh? It's not that way now, but we need to go out and tell them anyway. But when revival comes, and I pray in revival, real revival yeah. will come. Luke chapter 13 and verse 3, listen to this. Luke chapter 13, verse 3, and, and he skipped a verse, verse 4, and verse 5, he says the same thing. Uh, Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Uh, I was talking to somebody just recently. Uh, in fact, he said, actually, I tell you nay, but except you repent, that's the actual verse, you shall all likewise perish. He said the same thing in verse 5. 
And so I'd leave him in it. And I was talking to a man the other day, and it's it just like, uh, he, he used the word backslide. Like uh, you could just backslide and, and live on and on and on in sin, you know. No, you can't. I, I'm not saying you'll stumble in sin. We all stumble in sin. But no. Did you know backslide is not even a New Testament? <laughs> That's an Old Testament word. Uh, don't get into all backslide stuff and say you can be saved. And I talked to a lady one time who was living in open sin with a man. Immorality. Uh, either fornication or adultery. I don't know if one of them had been married before or not. I don't know which way it was. But they were living together. And she told me she was saved. And I said, no, no, no. No, we need, we need to... We need to, well, anyway, we won't get into that story, but anyway, the Bible's very clear. If you can live in sin and never have any chastening, then the Bible calls you a bastard. That, that's the word that's used. If you be without chastisement, it's Hebrews 11, 6, I mean, if you be without chastisement, wherein all are partakers, then are you bastards and not sons. Let me explain to you, and I try to, it's hard to get across to worldly people that are living in sin and enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, but uh, if, if you're talking about a person that was saved, I believe David's saved. I believe I'll see David in heaven. But because of that one time, that one sin, immorality, God whipped that boy the rest of his life. Could I tell you this chasing me? He's chasing me. Anybody in here read, don't raise your hand, get a whip that. I got plenty of them. I won't tell you something. I, got, I know what a whipping is. And I don't, but I don't I don't like a whipping from God. I've got some of those too. They're pretty hard. But when you if you get into immorality in that type, let me tell you another one. Uh, this might give you a better example here. Uh, Samson, great man of God and of power. Man, you talk about power. He had power. He could kill a thousand men with his bare hands. He had, he had a jawbone of an ass, but but I mean he didn't have a machine gun. <laughs> a thousand men. And yet he started playing around with the women and committing immorality. And God took his power from him. God let the Philistines hold him down and gouge his eyes out. I believe I'm going to see Samson in heaven. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me you're living in immorality. There's no chastening on you. God will whip the socks off of you. God will do some whipping on you. He is a good heavenly father. So I, I run into that all the time. No, no. No, no. I tell you, neighbor, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Jesus said, if you, if you, if you live in sin, no, you're not saved. Acts chapter 16 and verse 31, they had to believe what they heard. It says in Acts 16, 31, and uh, they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thine house. Talking to the Philippian jail, if you remember the story there. And uh, if you like to be saved, you got to do what they did to be saved. And that's what I'm talking about. People watching us too. And, and uh, here or in watching us, it doesn't matter. If you're not saved, you can be saved, but you can't live in sin. Uh, God will, will beat the, the, as we say, beat the devil out of you. That's what we get the good way to put it. Number two, they were separated from by baptism. Look at verse 41. Again, they gladly received his word and were baptized. It's a good thing that my baptism does not save you. But it's the first thing God wants you to do after you're saved. And so you ought to be baptized. Will you go to heaven if you're not baptized? I believe you will. But the thief on the cross didn't have a chance to get baptized. And sometimes people, for different reasons, just don't. Uh, but uh, you should. I, I believe that because the Lord commands it, in uh, verse 38, he, Peter said, I didn't repent and be baptized. Now again, baptism doesn't save you. But by doing it, I believe you'll grow more in Christian life. If you refuse to do the first thing God said for you to do, then you're probably not going to grow much, most likely. And it is a picture, and I always, always illustrate it this way when we're baptizing somebody. Before we put them in the pool, I'll get out there and I'll say, I'll read this scripture and I'll say, it's a picture of death as you are putting them down. Picture of burial as you put them under the water. Picture of a resurrection to walk in a brand new life. We're to live differently now. We're to walk differently. We're to uh, repent. He said repent and be baptized. And I thought about that. You know, I didn't know what the word repent probably years and years after I saved. But you know what? I repented when I got saved. I didn't realize it. Until <laughs> later. Uh, you see, I didn't want to go to church when I was lost. Well, first thing I, I said, I told my wife, I said, man, 
We don't know as much as little children here. We've got to go to every service. We're going to go to every service. Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night. By the way, I had training in then. That's another hour a night. Four hours. Over four hours. We loved it. Whenever we, Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, training in, Wednesday night, revival me. Now we want, we wanted to go. I repented of not wanting to go to church. I didn't know I was doing that, you know. But God knew. I, I started praying for folks. You know, God says to pray without ceasing. Pray without any commands us. Commands us to go to church. Uh, forsaking not. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, forsaking not the assembling yourselves together. You're supposed to go to church. Whenever the church assembles, you're supposed to go there. You're not hindered by work or something. You need to go. And so, uh, the Bible talks about, you know, doing all, I repented of those things. And I didn't even know I repented. What about the, and then I learned about tithing some months down the road. And I said, man, I need to start tithing. And my wife and I, we were in a we life of sin. We'd had a life of sin behind us. Man, we were in trouble. We were, people were calling, all kinds of stuff going on. Didn't have money. And, and so we, we started tithing. And we got into deeper trouble. And we stopped tithing. And uh, we got in bigger trouble then. Really got in big trouble then. <laughs> about whooped the socks off of us. And uh, uh, at the end of the month, we stopped tithing for a whole month. And I said, uh, I owe two bills on everything. What happened? <laughs> I only had some one bill. I got two bills on the credit card. I got two bills on the Everything it tore up could tear up did. Everything it broke down did. I had to spend my money out. I told my wife, I said, if we lose everything we got, we're going to go back to tithing. And we did. And God is blessed. I, I couldn't tell you how we got out of that mess. I couldn't. I was there. But I couldn't tell you. God did a, a miracle. He did a work on us. Oh, my friend. And then witnessing. I started going out and witnessing. Man, they had a regular witnessing program. They gathered together and they had a big map of the area there. And we'd take different streets or different places, different ones, pair off in twos, and go. Man, I didn't know that. But that's called repentance. You do it automatically. When the Holy Ghost comes in, man, you'll just change. God will change you. And everybody may not have the same experience as I have, but I'm just saying, I, things changed. Romans chapter 6, verse 3 and 4. Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him of baptism unto death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. And that's Romans 6, 3 and 4. And that's the one I always read uh, before I got back into the pool. I always read that one and explain it. Number three. These folks in the book of Acts were sound in their doctrine. Uh, in her doctrine, look at verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Brother, we need to continue steadfastly in this, this word of God. Uh, the, what, what we're preaching from the pulpit, what Tom's teaching from the, from the, the Sunday school lesson, what we're, what we're learning from as we read our Bibles and pray. Oh, my friend, they followed the doctrine that was preached to them. And uh, uh, they practiced what, what they learned. James chapter 1 and verse 22 says, But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. We, you know, the biggest lie a person can tell us is that they're all right. If they're lost, they'll say they're saved. Sometimes a person that's really saved will say, I'm all right with God, and they're not. Oh, my friend, don't lie to yourself. Be, deceive your own selves. You may say, you, well, I believe that Bible. Hey, I believe every word of it. If you're not practicing it, you don't believe it. We, we got to practice it. We got to live it. Matthew 7, 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven. Well, what is his will? Well, his will is that you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You follow him in baptism. You live for him. You go to church. You know, all the things I just mentioned. And all those things, that's his will. It's his will for your life. It's his will. In fact, uh, 1 Peter 1.15 says, But as he which is called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. That means not only your words, uh, but conversation goes on to mean your behavior too. Uh, so, uh, 1 Peter 1.15, So as he that is called you is holy, we're to be holy. Holy. We're to be, uh, in fact, the Bible calls a lot of those men saints. We're to be called saints. And uh, uh, it's got a ring to it, doesn't it? Uh, Saint Bobby, there, Saint, Saint Tom. Amen. 
We got, I tell you, it reminds us what we're supposed to be, how we're supposed to live. You put into practice those things that are preached and taught uh, from the Bible, those things that you read and study. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 3 says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And folks, I believe we're living in that day today. Teachers having itching ears. In other words, they're preaching other things that are not in that Bible. And people love it. People love it. As long as it's, I call it easy believism. And, and the droves are going, these large churches have several campuses. A lot of them are, are not uh, very sound in their doctrine. Not very sound in the things that they do. Uh, they play rock music and all the different things of the world. That, that draws the world. And uh, we don't need that. No. No, we need to be practicing sound doctrine. What did, it is, did they say? It said they continued steadfastly in the apostles, but that was sound doctrine. Sound doctrine. All right. Uh, number four, they were strong in their fellowship. I love to have fellowship. Do you love to have fellowship? I love, I miss our Christmas or Thanksgiving, you know, uh, parties and stuff because I love good fellowship. And uh, we're kind of hindered right now and we have to be careful and we're not going to have that. But that's not the only fellowship. We have fellowship here this morning. We don't have the food. We'd like to have the food, but we don't have the food. But we can have good fellowship. Amen. We can. And they had good fellowship. Tremendous fellowship. Uh, 1 John 1 and verse 3 says, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that he also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship was with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. So, when well, we have fellowship, why it's so sweet? Because it's the Father and the Son. We're having fellowship with them, with each other. It's just a sweet experience, and whether it's at church or at a meal or wherever it's at. But they were close in their fellowship. Uh, and they were so close that when one had a need, uh, they tried to help with that need you know, as best they could. And the different ones, maybe they would meet that need. I, I heard Barton say the other day, I didn't realize this, uh, he came back into town Friday because he was on the radio Friday. He'd been gone somewhere. And he made a statement that he had taken up over $300,000 for Kentucky. That little radio station. Over $300,000. You know, that's what we're talking about here. People, pe people just love. And he made a statement the other day. I'm going to start taking it up for Florida. He said, some of you may be tired of it. Some of you may have given what you can give. And that's all right. And I like that spirit. But he said, somebody might want to do something. And I'm going to take it up again. I guarantee you somebody will, will do something again. And God will raise up another, I don't know how much, uh, for, for those people in Florida. There, there are many down there. There are brothers and sisters in Christ. Know the Lord. And he's working through churches down there. So obviously they are. And they're suffering. And that's what he's talking about here. That uh, when they had a need... They help the others in need. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 28 says, Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands, the thing which is good. Now watch this. That he may have to give to him that need it. In other words, I'm to take care of my family. I'm to tell you, you're worse than infidel if you don't take care of your own family, the Bible said. And, and we need to take care of our own family. We're not saying that. But you have a little extra? And somebody has a real need like that. I mean, they lost everything down there. Some of them lost everything. Some of them lost their homes, place they lived. They're in a, maybe a gymnasium somewhere, just laid on a mat or a cot. And uh, we can't build their house back for them and all, but we could help them a little bit right now. Let's see that they have something to eat, something to drink. Uh, that'd, be, that'd be a real blessing with it. That's what he's talking about. But let him that stole steals know when you get right with God, you ought to quit stealing. <laughs> okay? <laughs> and you ought to work. You ought to go to work. Boy, this world needs to hear that, don't they? Amen. <laughs> I went to a place up in Bavard the other day. I was taking Brother Hamby and we were going to a place. And we got in there and they said, we can't. We, we just taken online orders and sent it out. We got no help. People don't want to work. People don't want to work. I don't know how you live if you don't work. I love to work. I always have loved to work. I grew up on a farm, son. I'll tell you. <laughs> always had jobs to do. Always had work to do. And uh, it was just expected. But I can't imagine somebody laying around. I'm not going to retire. 
if I have good health, I mean, I don't know if, I have, if my health gets bad, but my health doesn't get bad. I, I told somebody, I said, what would I do? Sit on the dock of the bay and watch a tide roll away? <laughs> what old singer said that? <laughs> no, I couldn't do that. I got to do something. I want to do something for Jesus. I want to do something for the Lord. I love Him. I appreciate it. And if I dive my boots on, that's all right. There's a man prayed that, and, and I can't remember the big church down in Greenville, right off 253 there. And he died in the pulpit preaching. Brother, he got his, he got his prayer answered. He did. And big church, huge church. Brother, I tell you, that's the way to go. That'd be a way to go. Amen. But one of the reasons we work is to be able to help others. And so, if there's a call for helping others, and, and, and maybe you can do something. I mean, they had a genuine love for one another. And it was proven by what they did for one another. So you just say, I love you. Lord bless you. <laughs> oh, no. Supposed to go beyond that if they're in real need. And we're family. Family stick together. <clears throat> oh, my friend. Number five, one more. Give you one more. They were simple in their worship. Verse 42. He did it again. They continued steadfast in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. And here's the worship. And in breaking of bread and in prayers. Uh, they observed the Lord's Supper. That's what that breaking of bread means. They prayed. They preached. Did you know we're still praying for a pianist over here? Anybody want to start taking piano lessons? They meant you, could, you could be our answer to prayer <coughs> on, on that. But do you know the book of Acts? These people didn't have a piano. They didn't have an organ. They did not have a choir. By the way, choir is an Old Testament thing. It's an Old Testament thing. Now, I had three choirs. Boy, I'm praying. I'm not against choirs. I'm not, I'm not against choirs. I love choirs. They can be a blessing. But if you don't have a choir, that don't mean you. In fact, you're, you're pretty big. Biblical and scriptural if you don't have a choir. Most of those little house churches didn't have that. Didn't have that. They didn't have that. It was simple in their worship. Oh, but praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank God. We're going to have Lord's Supper one day again, too. We're thinking about planning. Pray. It's going to be in those little divine package things, so you won't have to worry about somebody. You know, come and get your own, pick it up. We won't do anything that's uh, going to give somebody something. But anyway, we're thinking about it, praying about it. But it was just, I mean, they were faithful to public worship. They were faithful to their private worship. They were faithful because they loved Jesus and they believed he died for them. The uh, Bible says in Psalm 96 and verse 9, O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, fear before him all the earth. Or just simple worship. Simple worship. It doesn't have to be behind the stained glass and, and, and you know, the, the, all the others. Nothing wrong with that. I think those things are beautiful. And, and some churches have them. And there's nothing wrong. I'm not criticizing that. But I'm just saying, where we just have the simple Basic thing. We can worship the Lord. That's what they had. That's what they did. John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24 says, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Because I'm going to say, God is the spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You know, there's people that can come here, I guarantee you, and, and have... Uh, their troubles tomorrow. Something's going to happen tomorrow. Maybe they're going to the doctor or going to surgery or something. Or maybe they have a ball game on their mind. They, they never heard anything from God. They didn't worship God. They, they just came and sat in the service. And, and that's not good. When we come and say, we need to listen to the Word of God and turn to the preacher and listen to the preacher. Take notes, whatever we can do, and try to follow along. Try to learn something that will help you. There'll be something in nearly every message that I've ever heard that would help me. I'll say nearly, I think every message. Something there for me. Something there for you. Maybe something, maybe something different. Uh, just maybe something somebody sung. Somebody prayed or something. But in the worship service, there'll be something here for you every time. Not the elaborate services uh, necessarily. And those, those are, I've been in some of those that were good. Some of them are good. And, uh, but just the simple heart worship, that's what God, just honoring Him because you love Him and you want to pray and you want to read your Bible when nobody's watching. You want to meditate. And I can't believe how much that word is in there. We'd be preaching on that. I think you get a night, uh, every night. David meditated much on the Word of God, didn't he? We have that 
series on the Psalms on Sunday night. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 15 and verse 4, Who shall not fear thee, O Lord, and glorify thy name? For thou only art holy, for all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest, they're, they're made known, they're, they're clear. Uh, You've got to be saved to worship the Lord. Uh, I prayed before I was saved. But I'll tell you something. I wasn't saved. And I didn't know God wasn't hearing my prayer. He doesn't hear your prayer. He'll hear that. You know that first prayer? God be merciful to me, a sinner. Lord, come into my heart. Lord, forgive me. Yes, however you want to pray. Uh, he'll hear that one first. But God does not. He does not honor a person that's lost. He can't. Because they have not put him in their heart. But once you get saved, the Spirit of God comes in. Uh, then you can honor Him and you can pray and worship. And uh, let me ask you this. Are you saved? And I'm talking to this camera here too. Anybody, but I'm talking to this camera. Do you know for sure if you were to die today, you'd go to heaven. The Bible says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised Him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, 13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved today. If you just simply repent of your sins and receive Christ as your own personal Savior. He wants to save you. Tim, you have a, a, a verse there, a couple of verses maybe. Thank you for joining us for this week's message from Pastor Billy Balcom. For more information about New Beginning Baptist Church and our ministries, please visit our website at www.nbbc280.org. If you have any questions about our church or comments about this video, please use the contact page on our website or send an email to crane.t at nbbc280.org. May the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace for today and bright hope for tomorrow.